been hanging out quite a bit. And it's time. It's time I tell you something. Get something off my chest. I haven't been perfectly honest with you. I told you I was going to go through my CD collection alphabetically. And it's been a long time since I did it. So it's time I get back on track and, and make good with you because you've been so great to me. I miss you so much, baby. Please, if you can find it in your heart, just let's just put on some Netflix and see how it goes. Okay? I really want this to work, honey. You mean you mean so much to me. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get back into the alphabetical metal CDs instead of collection update after collection update after collection update. There will still be collection updates. I'm still an idiot who buys... A lot of CDs, too much. Uh, but anyways, I want to get back into it and uh, focus more on uh, the collection stuff. Because I think a lot of you guys subscribed to me because you wanted me to do that. I don't know. Uh, I like variety in the channels and the YouTubers that I watch and stuff. So I'm sure you guys do too. But uh, it's time that I offer it back up to you instead of just collection updates, collection updates. Anyways, uh, we're going to be listening to a really good album that I recommend you track down a copy of. This is Shadow Souls Garden by Fatal Embrace. Sweden's Fatal Embrace. Century Media put this out in 1997. I briefly skimmed by this album in my 1997. It was a great year for metal video, but I uh, wished I could have taken a little bit more time to talk about it. Uh, these guys were out of Varberg, as were Kromlek, one of my absolute favorite Swedish death metal bands. So these guys are super melodic, as you'll hear. A lot of acoustic stuff, a lot of harmonies going on. Uh, <clears throat> Varberg is also where Anato was from. So, I don't know, you can kind of get an uh, idea of what sort of uh, scene they were from. I think they sound quite a bit like uh, Eucharist, A Velvet Creation, which was a fucking phenomenal forward-thinking record. And, uh, it's like, there's these albums out there that you just, that you just think of as staples, perfect albums, um, A Velvet Creation is definitely a fine example of something like that, and you never really get the chance with albums like that to say, God, if there were just another album that sounds so much like that, because, you know, Eucharist went on to do, um, Mirror Worlds, that album's pretty great, um, but it's just no Velvet Creation. Um, and it's nice to have something as kind of a taster or a teaser or a, a fluffer uh, to when you're missing an album or you're like you want a little bit more of an album uh, that you've loved for 20 some years. So if a Velvet Creation makes you feel that way, check out Shadow Souls Garden by Fatal Embrace. It will not let you down. So alphabetically, the last album we talked about was Day Infernali's uh, shitty album, whatever. Uh, so we're going to be picking up where we left off with Deinonychus, the Ark of Thought. Uh, so this was put out on Supernal Music, uh, probably 97 if I'm not uh, mistaken, but this is a Digipack edition. Really cool band. Um, I've always meant to pick up some other records by him or them, but I do that thing with this band in particular and a lot of other bands, honestly, where... This album is so good that I can't fathom any of his other albums being this good. So a lot of times I just kind of like shut down and I don't get curious enough or I'm not confident enough that the other albums by said project or band could possibly be as good as this one. So kind of why bother? I don't know. I'm kind of picky like that with certain bands. It's not like this is one of my favorite records of all time so or bands of all time by any means. So it's not like the drive is there to make me go ahead and pursue getting all of his stuff. But I have heard a couple of other ones, and I don't know, I, I never really came up with an opinion on based on, uh, I don't know, comparing that, them versus this one. But, uh, you know, if I saw it in a used bin or something, I would probably pick up other albums by this guy. But this one is really phenomenal. Um, it kind of reminds me, I guess, if you would take As the Flower Withers by My Dying Bride and kind of blacken it a little bit and kind of add maybe a little bit more atmosphere and ferocity to it it's really good check this out arc of thought by Deinonychus. supernal records yeah uh let's see next we've got 
Delirium Tremens with Thrashing Warthogs. Uh, definitely haven't listened to this in a minute. Uh, we got this in a trade from Pagan Flames many, many, many years ago. Um, all I really remember about this is it's just kind of like retro thrash, or like like those red jewel cases. Retro thrash kind of uh, done more modernly in a way. Uh, I believe the guys are from Germany. Uh, Merciless Records put this out. And the uh, most notable thing, or at least the thing that has stuck with me <clears throat> about this album throughout the years, is that there's a cover of Paradise City by, you guessed it, Guns and Fucking Roses. So, if you want to hear a thrash metal band play Guns N' Roses, like I always do, check out Delirium Tremens with thrashing warp fucking hogs. Next, we've got... Oh man, this is a really good... So, I didn't even look at this pile hardly when I grabbed it. Uh, but this is a good band. Demented Ted. There's a death metal band name for the books. With Promises Impure. Um, don't let the name throw you off. This is some very killer U.S. death metal. Um, these guys cut their teeth on the same scene that, like, Chicago's Morgue did. I believe these guys are from, um, a suburb of Chicago. It was recorded in Chicago. Good stuff. I just don't know why they ever, I don't know, Ted Bundy? Is that what they're going for? There's, I just, when I picked this up, and it looked metal, and... It was on Pavement Music, which is kind of infamous for, like, reissuing stuff and having kind of mediocre bands. But Demented Ted is really good. Um, you know, it's been a long time since I listened to it, but it's really just, like, straightforward U.S. death metal, deicide, cannibal corpse, death, stuff like that. Um, maybe not as shreddy, maybe a little bit more intense and kind of guttural and brutal. Uh, so maybe a little bit more kind of New York or East Coast influence than anything. But... Yeah, for an album that came out in, uh, why is, I gotta really get my shit together when I look at the spine, or an album, and I say, or the year it came out, okay, I'm just gonna guess, somewhere around 95, this came out. So, for other, like, death metal bands that were coming out around 95, this really stacks up among stuff like that, and, like, I think really the only thing wrong with this band is that they were fucking named stupid. And uh, they never really put anything else out after this record, as far as I know. Um, another, I think, comparable band would be Oppressor. Um, Sources of Oppression, fucking great. So yeah, Demented Ted. I've also picked up a demo tape from these guys at a garage sale for 50 cents. Weird pickup. Oh boy, speaking of really good death metal, we got Demolic. So obviously I'm never going to probably pony up the money for Nespeth. Um... So this is really the next best thing, and bless you, Smart Records, for reissuing great stuff and doing a great job of it. Um, here is the original artwork for Nespeth that came out on Necropolis. In fact, one of the very, very first rele releases for Necropolis, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is a two-disc CD set, as you can see, and it has uh, demo material uh, throughout the years, and what like, the biggest reason I bought this, actually, not only to buy it to own Nespeth, but uh, there's some tracks on here from, I want to say 2006, that were previously unreleased. I'm just going to have to look in the booklet, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, this is called 20th Adversary of Emptiness, and um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, Finnish and Scandinavian death metal bands who put out one or two classic albums, but their demos were kind of, eh, didn't really live up to uh, the full length. There's also an interview in here. But Demolik is one of those bands where their demos are totally worth downloading because you're never going to get your hands on a real copy of it, or just getting this. The demos are fucking killer, and if I'm not mistaken, all of the demos have material, there's three of them, uh, that isn't on the record. A lot of times the bands would kind of you know, reuse those songs from the demos for their uh, eponymous full length. Uh, but then, okay, so then in 2006 they got back together, started playing shows, and it, in fact I think they're still an uh, active live band, but kind of cool actually how they have not put out any more material. Um, they did these rehearsal tracks or whatever in 2006, wrote new material. Um, so this is really the only uh, updated material since Nespeth, and I highly recommend checking that out. 
Um, those tracks, I want to say there's like five or six of them. I'm fucking up and figuring out like which tracks it is because this isn't a very helpful guide. Um, anyways, just just get this. You should be able to pick it up from uh, from Spart Records or some distro. Um, look on the metaldetector.com. I cannot harp on you guys enough to use the metaldetector.com. I'll put a link down below. For all you fucking collectors, scumbags like me, the metaldetector.com is a vice. It's a problem, but it also kind of helps you get the best deal for what you're after. So. Um, what it is is that it's a search engine aggregator that searches 186 different distros for the album that you're looking for. So you can search by format, price, get what you're looking for, for the right price and the right format. Enough of that. Next we've got, oh, Demolition Hammer with Time Bomb. Um, yeah, it's Demolition Hammer, but I don't know what went wrong. Um, I don't know if they lost a member or what I'm not too familiar with Demolition Hammer of course um, Epidemic of Violence is a killer and I just got in a copy of that other one um, but this sucks I don't know what went wrong here and I never ever listened to this and in fact my buddy Wayne sent me this copy as a joke <laughs> so yeah I don't know maybe it's not as bad as I actually remember it but I have probably only played this one or two times in the last 15 years or so. Uh, and I'd be willing to bet that I'm not too wrong about how much it sucks. 94 is when this came out. Time bomb. Next we've got Demon Ass. March of the Norse. Man, I really wish I loved this a lot more than I did. And as you know, I have kind of a lot of bitterness and a lot of uh, contempt and uh, whatnot for Immortal, one of my absolute, absolute favorite bands uh, because of Demon As. <coughs> a lot of people will say Immortal was a bath. Why don't you like a bath? Yada, yada, yada. At the Heart of Winter was an amazing record. Well, that's your opinion and you're wrong. Uh, Demon As was a brilliant riff writer and songwriter on the first four Immortal records. Um, then he got Carpal Tunnel, and uh, he actually recorded a demo for a project called Perfect Visions, uh, which never made it to physical format, and I think he was like so embarrassed by it that it uh, disappeared. I should probably look for that, a download of that, if I uh, think of it. Anyways, it was like really Sisters of Mercy influenced, um, and I remember when I talked on the phone with Demon Az back then, he was saying that he was done with Immortal, or no, I'm messing up my timelines. I think I read an interview back then that after he was done with Immortal, playing guitar in Immortal anyways, that he was going to continue doing this more slower project, Perfect Visions. Anyways, that's not what Demon has is. So uh, eventually he got back together with uh, some buddies. I can't remember really who all plays on this, but uh, it's a pretty good record. And uh, let's see, Ice Dale and Armageddon plays on Play on this this is really nothing uh, to write home about it's not amazing or anything but it's pretty great atmospheric uh, bathory worship pretty much uh, I am very curious to see what demon as and horde can pull off uh, in the reformed immortal uh, that should be coming out this year I think so I don't know we'll see where that goes I don't play this very often I don't hate it I don't love it it's just kind of there uh, demon as March of the North Next, I've got, uh, let's see, Demonic Mortuary. I don't know if this is a demo or what to really say about it, but Rusty Axe Records, a buddy of mine used to run Rusty Axe Records. Uh, this is called Thirst for Fucking Carnage. Yeah, I haven't listened to this very much. Um, it's a CDR demo from back in probably 2002 or 2003, somewhere around there. It has an NME cover on it, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, I don't really remember what this is like. I'm sure it's some pretty generic American uh, thrashy death metal, something like that. Um, so next, I decided to end this whole pile with uh, Demon C, one of my favorite bands, and it's going to be kind of tedious to get through all this Demon C stuff. So if you're not a Demon C fan, I don't mind if you just tune out here. But they're one of my favorite bands, mostly because their live show is 
one of the most intense, evil, and brooding things I've ever witnessed. And I've seen Demon C on stage five times. Um, absolutely incredible. I haven't seen them since they reformed a couple of years ago. And honestly, I haven't really kept up with them since um, this one came out. This is... No, this is the reissue, Empire of the Fallen Angel. I actually have another Demon C album that doesn't fit in my uh, shelves. Okay, let's just start from... Uh, I'm not very good at the chronology of their albums either, but let's just start with Within the Sylvan Realms of Frost. Uh, this came out on So It Is Done Productions. Kind of a rarity. Bought this for my buddy uh, Dustin a couple years ago. Um, and as far as Demon Seas material is concerned, it kind of all sounds the same. The early stuff anyways. Um, so that's Within the Sylvan Realms of Frost, and this is Frosty and Dawn. Also out on So It Is Done Productions. There's that iconic picture there. So I think Nuclear War Now has since reissued both this one and this one, as well as Joined in Darkness, which is kind of everyone's, I think, favorite Demon Sea album. Um, I did get this autographed by Exithra when I met him back in 2003, I want to say. This is the first, I think, Demon Sea album that he did by himself. And I think it really worked to great effect. He, he really, I think, he puts together live bands and does some great performances, but when it comes to putting together records, I think he does his best work on his own um, and has, over the years, become a really talented drummer. Uh, but he uh, used a drum machine on Join in Darkness. Anyways, talk about it, just fucking sinister, satanic, fucking masterpiece. That record is just so chilling and weird. Um, so here's a reissue of both of those albums that I actually got before I got the original copies of them. Uh, Deathgasm put this out. Fucking pink lettering on there. So that's Fosty and Dawn and Within the Silver Realms of Frost. And actually Fosty and Dawn is a collection of demos. So DMC's discography is kind of a clusterfuck mess. And uh, Within the Sullivan Realms of Frost also has uh, different demo stuff put on it. So, I mean, the material is just scattered all over the place, and it's really hard to know what sessions are the best and what's, what's what, um, especially when their material kind of sounds all the same. Now, in 2003, they put out this album with the full live lineup. This is Empire of the Fallen Angel, and Bloodfire Death put this out with Redstream. And immediately after he put this album out, or they put this album out, he started saying that album is horrible, I hate the way it went, I'm going to completely re-record that album all by myself, kicked everybody out of the band and said, fuck those guys, I'm doing it on my own from now on. And I was kind of like, that's kind of weird because this album's pretty good, and uh, saw you guys play live, and you guys were amazing. Um, but so it took him, I don't know, about... 10 or 12 years to finally re-record the whole thing and uh, Forever Plagued put it out uh, three or four years ago with a couple of bonus tracks and I don't know if the bonus tracks are also re-recorded old songs or whatnot but uh, this is pretty good I do prefer it I guess to the uh, the original version of it but uh, I don't know I'm not a big fan of how people just like kick out musicians and then hire a bunch of new people in and then kick them out um kind of like fucking knock misty him by the way hey i got a giveaway i tried to sell this on ebay last week and uh nobody bought it so speaking of assholes um if you want this shirt by this stupid fucking band you can have it First person to comment down below can have this shirt. I will mail it to you. The size is 2XL, so you gotta be a fat ass to wear this. And you gotta be dumb to listen to this band. There you go. So, yeah, leave me a comment. First person to comment. I, this might get tricky, I know, but I'll try and be fair, uh, and you can have it. I don't know how else to really do that well, but whatever. That's the end of this alphabetical pile of goodies. We'll see you next time! Nah!